Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I will be looking at the ABIT IT7 Max motherboard. What is included in this package are three black ATA133 cables. You also get a black floppy cable. Here we have some tie downs. This is great for organizing all the cables inside of your case. And here we have a couple extra USB 2 ports. Not that you really need this to be honest because there's six USB 2 ports on the board itself. This would give you eight if you were to go ahead and plug this directly into your board. So lots and lots of USB 2 ports on this motherboard. Also we have the software and drivers, the manual and the motherboard itself. This board is based upon the Intel i845E chipset. Let me now go through and detail some of the features that are on this board. With regards to power supplies and how they connect up, this board requires a power supply with two feeds here. There's a feed right here for the power supply as well as right here. You need to connect these two in order to get this board to work. Some boards only have one. This one has two. Right here is where you install the Pentium 4 CPU. Also three banks of DDR memory right here. A floppy controller right here. Two IDE controllers right here. You can also have up to eight drives on this particular RAID. The RAID they're using is the High Point 374. Right here we have a post display. This is a power on self test display. This is great for really diagnosing errors that you're having with the board. You can cross reference a code to the manual and figure out exactly what is going on. Also on this board we have a reset button as well as a power button right on the board itself. Very convenient if you have the board outside of a case. Also this board comes with four PCI slots and one AGP. It also has five headers or five places to plug fans into. Two down here, two right here and also one right here. Now looking at this you can certainly see how many things that are actually on board with this particular motherboard. You have a NIC card, you have two USB ports here and four more over here. All of these are USB 2. You have 5.1 channel audio, you also have the optic out, you also have two firewire connections right here and right here this is also with audio this is where you will be connecting it into your DVD or CD-ROM drive. I will be looking at some of the key important features within this particular BIOS. First I'll go into the advanced chipset features. In here you can adjust your memory timings. You can adjust them manually or you can adjust them by the automatic setting. You can also go further down here and adjust the system BIOS cacheable, the video BIOS cacheable, as well as the video RAM cacheable. And even further down here you can adjust the AGP aperture size as well as there's an option at the end here to actually enhance the memory performance. Within the integrated peripherals part of the BIOS you can enable or disable the controllers IDE1 or IDE2. You have your USB controller as well that you can control. You have your onboard audio you can enable or disable that. You can go down as well enable or disable the onboard LAN controller or the NIC card. You also have the onboard RAID you can enable or disable that. You also have the firewire as well as the USB 2 controllers which you can enable or disable. Another important part here is the PC health status and in here you can monitor your voltages, all your fan speeds, your system temperature as well as your CPU temperature. You can also set the system to alarm if the fan was to fail or to shut down if the fan was to fail and also you can set the CPU shutdown temperature or the CPU warning temperature. My favorite place in this BIOS is the soft menu 3. In here you can adjust your front side bus settings, the PCI bus frequency, the voltages for both the memory as well as the CPU. Right here is where you would be setting the front side bus setting and goes all the way up to 250. The next one down here is the PCI bus frequency. Now this is pretty important if you're doing a high front side bus because it really keeps the PCI bus down. You can see you have all kinds of options there as well. You also have the multiplier frequency. You also have a DRAM 
ratio here as well. You can go by CPU, you can go low or high depending on the performance you want. Now further down here as well you have voltage options. The voltage options for the CPU goes up to a maximum of 1.7 volts and for the memory it goes up to a maximum of 2.8 volts. I will be using a program called Psy Software Sandra just to give you some idea how much I can overclock a Pentium 4 to as well as how fast the memory speeds are on this particular motherboard. Now I'm using an Intel Pentium 4 2.26 CPU. I have it at 3 gigahertz. You can see here the CPU result is 6093 and the multimedia benchmark is 12,063 and the memory result is 2,715 megabytes per second this is using Corsair memory the 3200 memory and I have the memory set at a front side bus of 176 using two Maxter ATA133 drives in a RAID 0 configuration I got a fantastic result here of 43,340 this motherboard has it all. It has all the things on board, the audio, the RAID, the Firewire, the NIC, the USB, everything you're possibly ever going to need on a motherboard. Also this board is fantastic at overclocking. Now you combine those and you're going to get definitely 100% kick ass. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also, be sure to pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com. And when you're there, you can go in and register. If you haven't already registered, registration is completely free. You can go in there and leave your own suggestions and comments. And you can find out all kinds of information about all the products I video review as well. Until the next time, take care.